Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. In 1990, the U.S. Navy began looking for a replacement for its aging fleet of destroyers. The Navy was looking for a powerful and highly survivable ship. R&D led to the development of the Zumwalt class of guided missile destroyers, or DDG. This class was designed to provide the Navy with a versatile and highly advanced surface combatant with capabilities for land attack, surface warfare, and anti-aircraft defense. Despite initial plans to build more than 30 Zumwalt class destroyers, the program was scaled back due to cost concerns and only three ships were built. The $4.24 billion destroyer is a revolutionary warship featuring modern technologies such as a highly automated propulsion system, integrated power generation, and advanced sensors and weapon systems. The ship also has a unique design with a low radar cross-section, making it difficult to detect by enemy radar. The vessel is 394 feet long and 81 feet wide, with a displacement of over 50,000 tons. It has a high-tech dynamic positioning system that enables it to maintain a fixed position even in adverse weather conditions. The Zumwalt class destroyer plays a critical role in naval operations and is a key part of the Navy's efforts to maintain its technological edge over potential adversaries. The lead ship of this class, USS Zumwalt, or DDG-1000, was named after Admiral Elmo Zumwalt, the youngest person to serve as Chief of Naval Operations. The construction of DDG-1000 started in 2009 and involved the collaborative effort of the U.S. Navy, Bath Ironworks, Northrop Grumman Ship Systems, and several other subcontractors. Building this ship required years of planning and design and expertise of some of the world's most skilled engineers and shipbuilders. The construction process involved numerous steps and phases. The first step was the fabrication of the ship's modules, which were then transported to the shipyard for assembly. The modules were made from high-strength steel to ensure maximum durability and strength. These included the hull, superstructure, and various compartments. On December 14, 2012, the last module, the deck house, was integrated with the ship's hull at General Dynamics Bath Ironworks. The ship's engines, electrical systems, and weapons were also installed during this phase. It was also equipped with the latest navigation and communication systems, 
as well as advanced safety features to ensure the safety of the crew and the successful completion of operations. The USS Zumwalt 1000 was commissioned on September 15, 2016, in Baltimore in the presence of dozens of dignitaries and members of the Navy. Hooyah Zumwalt! Hooyah Zumwalt! Hooyah Zumwalt! Hooyah Zumwalt! Hooyah Zumwalt! Hooyah Zumwalt! Thank you all for joining It was a significant event in the U.S. Navy's history. In addition to the ship's stealth and advanced vertical launch system, DDG-1000 has two medium-range MK-46 30mm close-in gun systems that provide robust rapid-fire capability against hostile surface targets approaching the ship. The second ship of the Zumwalt class, named Michael Mansour, was commissioned in 2019. The third and last ship of this class was recently constructed at Bath Iron Works in Maine. After completing its initial sea trials, the vessel sailed away from Bath to Ingalls Shipbuilding in Mississippi for further testing and outfitting. The voyage marks a significant milestone in the ship's journey toward full operational capability. On board the Zumwalt, sailors engage in various shipboard activities to maintain the ship's readiness and keep morale high. One of the most important shipboard activities on the Zumwalt is training. Sailors must constantly train to ensure they are proficient in their duties and ready to respond to any situation. This includes everything from basic seamanship and navigation to advanced combat tactics and weapon systems. However, critical to every ship's successful deployment and upkeep will be its maintenance. Sailors conduct routine maintenance and repairs to ensure the ship is fully operational. The ship's advanced systems and weapons require specialized training and expertise, making this a significant responsibility for the crew. A peculiar exercise as part of the crew's training is line handling. During this training activity, sailors practice securing and releasing mooring lines as the ship comes into port or leaves. A line handler receives signals from the bridge and directs the team to adjust the lines accordingly. The sailors are trained to maintain tension on the lines and work together to moor the ship successfully. Effective communication and teamwork are vital to ensure the ship remains secure while docked. In addition to training and maintenance, sailors on the Zumwalt engage in a range of other activities to keep morale high. The ship features a fully equipped gym, recreational activity spaces, compact and functional living quarters, as well as an equipped galley to prepare and serve meals for the crew.
Another powerful addition to the existing U.S. destroyers is the Arleigh Burke class. These large warships are equipped with advanced technology and state-of-the-art weapon systems, making them capable of carrying out a wide range of missions, from anti-submarine warfare to ballistic missile defense. Life inside an Arleigh Burke class destroyer is characterized by long hours, rigorous training, and constant vigilance. Video, the crew members of these ships are highly skilled. They work tirelessly to ensure that the ship is always mission ready. Sailors perform regular maintenance on everything from the engines and weapon systems to the living quarters and mess decks. Additionally, the crew participates in training exercises and drills to ensure they are prepared for any situation that may arise. This includes conducting live fire exercises and practicing emergency response scenarios. The ship's operations center is the nerve center of the ship, where highly trained operators monitor the ship's systems and keep track of the ship's position, speed, and other vital information. The ship's bridge is where the ship's officers maneuver the ship and make critical decisions. Living quarters aboard these ships are typically small and cramped, with each sailor having their own bunk bed and locker. However, the ship's crew has access to a wide range of amenities and facilities, including a gym, mess hall, and recreation areas. After several months of deployment, the Arleigh Burke class, as any other guided missile destroyer and naval ship, returns to its home port. For instance, the USS Rampage, or DDG-61, returned to its home port of Naval Station Norfolk after a deployment in the U.S., 5th and 6th Fleet areas of operation. The return of the USS Rampage marks the end of a successful deployment for the crew, who worked hard to perform their assigned duties. As the USS Rampage returns to its home port, the crew of over 200 sailors looks forward to reuniting with their loved ones and taking some well-deserved rest and relaxation. However, the ship's return also signifies the new start of a new phase in its operational cycle. Three months after the USS Rampage returned home, the USS Bunker Hill, or CG-52, returned to its home port in San Diego as well. Homecoming marked the end of a successful deployment in the Indo-Pacific region. As the ship docked in San Diego, sailors disembarked to the cheers of their loved ones, who had been eagerly waiting to welcome them home. It is a joyous occasion for the sailors and their families, who have been separated for months due to the deployment. The deployment and return of these advanced destroyers are a testament to the professionalism and dedication of the sailors on board. A 
it is also a reminder of the vital role played by the United States Navy in safeguarding the nation's interests and promoting global security. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.